James Reg is one of the UK's best climbing competitors. He was born without the lower part of his left arm, and today we follow James as he competes in a bouldering competition. James reveals a unique look at his climbing experience, and we see how far he can push himself against a regular set of hard blocks, despite needing to find a very different approach to each problem. Hello everyone, welcome back to another video. Today we are at Yonder in London for the Kendall Mountain Masters competition, and I am joined by a guest. We actually met in a parkour mm -hmm. capacity, and you come from like a parkour background. Yeah, right? that's largely where I started out uh, doing parkour. I was probably that kid that most of us were, climbing trees, jumping off things, doing all kinds of crazy things to terrify their mothers. And do you find that your background in parkour has like largely informed, I guess like the kind of climbing that you like enjoy or gravitate towards or you're, I guess like a climbing style is what I'm getting towards. Surprisingly not the style so much. I don't know if it's because I'm a bit taller but I naturally find myself climbing quite statically. Um, so actually adapting to a more dynamic style has been a big part of my training. Brilliant. Well, should we go and find some comp some plans, yeah. today? Yeah, I'm really excited to climb with you. I think it's going to be a very Begin. fun session. Go and get warm and then hit some comp box. So basically we're here today because it's the Kendall Mountain Masters. I've been doing, playing a part in helping them organise the event, doing some talks to give people like a bit of a, an introduction to paraclimbing. So that's why we're here today, it's going to be 25 blocks, going to see how much we can do. And um, In bouldering competitions, all the para athletes compete together, so there's always going to be that separation on ability levels, I could be competing against someone with uh, missing fingers or I could be competing against someone who's got complete no use of one side of the body. So there's always going to be a realistic expectation of placings. We're mainly here for the community and the progression of paraclimbing itself. I am coming along, I'm, I'm along for the ride. I'm stealing, stealing the beta for the competition. Yeah, my beta <laughs> might be a little bit different to yours, Hannah, I will say. Uh, maybe you should try some one-handed beta today. but. Yeah, at the start of my session, I'm just looking for some nice, easy jugs to get on, just to get the mind used to climbing. So you can get so caught up in the grades sometimes, but you have to take a step away and realise that the root setters haven't set these roots with a one-handed per person in mind. So Yeah, I was going to ask you if that was a silly question, but something maybe that is just a curiosity, if I was to say, like, what grade do you climb? Is yeah. that almost a pointless yeah. question because of how... It's still nice, I think everyone likes to get, like I'm trying to get 7A at the moment on rope and I'm not far off and it's still nice to have something to work towards but at the same time it is completely, completely subjective but it's the same with tall people versus small people, they're going to have completely different beta for how they climb things. Um, Got to find the stuff that suits you. Yeah, exactly, yeah. I'm thinking try and get on some of the easy comp stuff now, I'm just wondering where, but I'm going to try this one I think, this one looks like uh, if I want to try, it's like a palmy one. Yeah, see that first move, quite technical, and then after that, I met with some lovely positive holds. So you kind of uh, don't want to speak too soon, but it feels like I've done the hard work now. How many, do you have an expectation of how many routes you'd like to do? Yeah, good question. It can, it can differ. Now that they've started setting with the paras in mind, uh, I think 10 plus is always a good kind of mark. But, you know, I could go to my winter boulder leagues on my local wall and sometimes turn up and get no more than two flashes, which is a bit, a little bit demoralising. So that's why I can kind of see it from those people's perspective. But um, again, depends on the setting, yeah. How is it that like route setters? can set yeah. more inclusively. I think having a mix is 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 yeah. the main thing. The other like thing for like climbing with regards to climbing holds at competitions, we would only get I would never get set pockets for example because someone with one hand is, is going to struggle to get into like a, a two finger pocket. These holds here, I would never get in uh, IFSC comp because in the quota for my category root setters can't put them. Um, I can still often get perches off them, but I'm not going to be reaching and pulling off it. Oh, see, it's not easy. That first move is definitely going to be... Yes, I really have to pull hard in those.
Oh, that's not nice. That's a wrist pull of that last one. There's a little crimp match at the top. I choose to tape up my short arm. The skin can get quite sensitive. It's not like the, the toughness you have on fingers. It gets a bit more sensitive, so uh, I choose to tape up. I've got a layer of K tape underneath to enable flexion in the joint, and then this medicine tape on top gives me the kind of toughness that I need. But not all of the pack athletes with one arm choose to. Some of them have built up a tolerance in their skin, but it's all dependent on the kind of short arm you got. There's so many different types of uh, different types of nubbing. That's what I like to call it, nubbing. <laughs> so this one here looks really good for the kind of stuff I was talking about earlier in terms of working on that dynamic power on the left arm. Like, whilst the holds are really positive because it's so overhangy, the difficulty is amplified. So I could easily just look at, that, look at that and think, oh, V2, I can do V2 comfortably. Not, not the case at all on something like this. It's going to make me work hard, especially coming through here, big move out to the left and then got ready to fight on that overhang. So definitely worth a go. And I guess for people who uh, maybe aren't familiar with watching paraclining, could you... Uh, so your category is what? It's called AU2, so uh, it's, it basically means arm amputee below elbow. So um, because I can use this part of my arm, I compete with people that have the same. But there's a, there was a separate category actually for above arm amputee. They don't okay. have that anymore. It's now below wrist AU3. Uh, it's all kinds of different acronyms and uh, I think the key to paraclimbing is creating enough competition but fair competition so they're constantly kind of reshuffling the pack. But yeah I'll be competing against other people that have uh, use below the elbow so it's a massive uh, important factor because I can still pull off hold quite comfortably with this arm. Whoa. See. Those are the kind of routes that I can dismiss sometimes and think, oh, too positive holds, too easy. But it's actually, this is where the grading is just irrelevant. That to me is a, a massive workout. So yeah, sure. it's just a lesson that you can still feel good, guys, if you're on those V1s, V2s. It's all subjective. Yeah. Imagine we're probably the first people to, to climb on these apart from the root setters, which is nice. Uh, yeah. Get them in the best condition. Yeah, come on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <coughs> oh, nice heel. Nice. Slab them. <laughs> I feel like we are heading over that way. I love that kind of climb. Yeah. I don't know how doable that I mean, is. Um, it's fairly it, right hand. Yeah, dominant. it's perfect for me, exactly. Yeah. Um, Do you want to give this a go? Should we give it a go? Too... I think it'd be really yeah, nice. Yeah, go on then. It's not going to use too much energy, <laughs> that, is it? Um, it's all about where, getting the feet on this volume, isn't it? Yeah, trusting that last foot as well, but... It is. We'll not think about that until we get there. And then, when I start getting his arm down, it kind of keeps me... Yeah, yeah, yeah. ...locked in the wrong place. It's quite hard to get in a dynamic position. Yeah. Another key thing to talk about, actually, is with the bouldering comps, they obviously have tags where all your limbs start. And I have got some of the roots that have disclaimed that like sometimes physically there's no where I no no way that I can get this arm on that hold. So I always get into disclaim, start with all four limbs on unless you have a para uh, and they have started to do that so that people can start with three limbs on if, if necessary. But even in the comps we have to match on top holds. So you know stubbornness in me is like I need to find a way to, to do it as the route setter <laughs> intended. Good effort. Yeah. I think it's uh, for me. It's like 
knowing that I've got to be quick in my feet mm -hmm. and knowing that I can't be static through it is yeah. like stressful. Yeah, this is where those mental blocks really come in, I uh -huh. think. Um, Whoa. I think the positioning now that you're doing looks a lot better though. Yeah. yeah. It's just the commitment, isn't it? It is. It is. It's the more exposure you get to those kind of moves, the, the easier it is. Should we yeah. try something yeah, slightly let's different? Yeah, for it. Um, some very uh, challenging yet fun slab stuff today, it's actually. It's a lot of quite um, like volumey. I'm looking at this black one now, but I'm, I don't know. Uh, how feasible it is, but it's worth a go, I think. Do you, are you reading it as, uh, how are you reading it? So, yes, that is a good point. <laughs> <laughs> Am I reading it? That's the question. Nice positive hold to start, but this is gonna be very out to the left. Those holds are nice, but you need to find some form of compression on them, which I'm not seeing much of in terms of foothold. I don't know what this one's for. It doesn't seem to be linked to the route at all, but, I can't see many footholds, so it's going to be a case of taking your feet completely off, trusting these arms, and yeah. then bringing the heels up. But ah, give okay. it a go. Yeah. Come on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Ah, maybe I stand up. Oh, yeah, I mean, ah, it's doing okay, it's making sense now. <laughs> the brain is... Bit of freestyling. Yeah. Root re while you're on the boulder. Now I've got How a really... How are you feeling? Oh, nice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That looks great. Come on. Yeah. Yeah, strong. Come on. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yes! Mega. Yeah, 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 yeah. So good. Hey. Oh, nice. Super technical, I like so that. So <laughs> When you were like, you were like, oh, and then I'm gonna get my heel up. And I was thinking, what? Yeah, uh, <laughs> That's I not mean, hard to do, you did the right thing, just letting me post that, that, that myself. But th again, this is where the root reading needs to the constant learning curve. But those holds, are, when you get high enough on them, they're really nice for this arm. Obviously, if I'm pulling underneath, yeah. it's not ideal. But I have a question. Yeah, please. So do. on this move out here, mm. obviously I was reaching, really relying on my left hand. Yeah to like teeter across. And you kind of flagged out with your left, whereas I think I kind of like pushed with my right and flagged out until I got okay. something positive you, in my... To me, that felt like a, such a mobile yeah. thing to do. Because yeah. I think, because I have the luxury of being able to use my mm -hmm. left hand, mm -hmm. like I clearly am not super strong in like this range of motion mm -hmm. because I can, leave my right behind and have yeah. it not. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I used my foot up to flag out, so I didn't kind of barn door. Um, but yeah, they, you do kind of just compensate with certain things that you can't do by introducing other things. I think that's the, 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 the idea that anyone can work from this. It's always good in climbing to have more than one skill in your arsenary. So, you know, you can't, the gym guys that turn up can't just rely on their biceps to get up a route, they need to use their feet as well, so. We are gonna try, this. I think this is a really good blend of like, yeah. parkour comp style move. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Some like, slopey holds. Very slopey holds. Uh, so yeah, it's this purple. I think it might be. It's a very tall person to start. Yeah, I'm wondering if it's gotta be like a run approach for me. Yeah, might not need to be for me, but. No. <laughs> uh, I'm quite and tall. Then I think you probably need, yeah, you need Debatable a jam. Yeah. Probably not a jam. High foot on the slope. Yeah. And palm off. Big lock. It's going to be interesting palming off this arm. Mm-hmm. I'll give it a go. Fancy it. Give the whirl. Come on. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, 
solid. Nice. Yeah, it's just a quick right foot up. Yeah. And then. You're flexible. Um, yeah, I think it's one of those examples where being having a reach definitely helps you in certain situations. Like, didn't have to do a lot in the last part. Oh, that's not the start. Well, that, I mean, <laughs> yeah, you. I mean, you can still get to the start from that ground. position. Yeah. yeah, nice. Good, good compression. That's it. Trust that right hand. <laughs> Love a knee jam. Yes, come on, come on. Set. Yeah, stand up nice and tall. That's it. Oh. You get the left foot up, or is it a bit sketch? I think it's like a layback move for me. It was really using that right hand. But if the heel works, do that. Yeah! yeah. I think I'm going to have to give that a brush for anyone that goes Yeah, up many people are probably going to get on that. Yeah. Yeah, so. Start with that. To that. To that. Yeah, and once I get the feet across, it's going to be how I can kind of, one of those sort of cut back loose. Oh, that's a shoulder cruncher, that one. It's just about finding something for the left arm. I think I want to get the left arm under here. And then I'll be all right. Do you think I've got that? Nice. Come on. Yeah. Strong, come on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Come on. Yeah. Yeah, so strong. Come on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so strong. Come on, James. Come on. Come on. Come on. Yes, 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 yes. Ah. Oh. Oh. So such a mega effort. I enjoyed that. It's physical. <laughs> Gets harder though, there's not... You can see how much chalk there is in the starting holes and then up top. Not much on the top, yeah. I couldn't really get on anything on the under part of that under cling. I mean, you could kind of right hand in, but then you're really... No, I think I'll save my stuff, but do you want to give it a go? <laughs> yeah, the start feels like a massive achievement in itself. That's it. Yes, nice, Anna. Yeah, this is the bit I had to really fight. I think I got the uh, undercling of that hole, but it might not like this. Maybe. Yeah, I think that's what. But again, no, because I've got really less is. of a lever, it made more sense to me. I think for you, you kind of just have to go straight into a press. Uh, but for me, I was just trying to find something to get some stability on this arm, so I got under here. I think that about brings an end to our session. We're pretty, we covered a lot of ground. Yeah, we did a nice yeah. mix there. Lots really of good. different terrains, some new hole types. Yeah. You're doing a lot of work in your local community to do with inclusive and adaptive climbing. Yeah. I wondered if you wanted to talk a little bit about that and what it is that you're doing with, is it Grit? Yeah, that's right. So I've got a, a not-for-profit called Grit Collective, uh, which basically helps everyone climb no matter what 
ability level, physical impairments, anything, I've got that inclusive hat on, making sure everyone has the opportunity to try it, basically. I kind of quickly saw how I could use my own experiences to be that uh, positive influence on other people and decided to set up a charity. Now I've got a business, so yeah, Grit Collective. I'm also doing weekly paraclimbing sessions in around the Southwest for the UK Paraclimbing Collective. So lots going on um, with the sole drive of set proving that climbing is for everyone, basically. Wonderful, I love it. Mm. I'm gonna leave all of James's information in the description of this video, along with all of the relevant links for Grit and your social media. So make sure you do go and check James out if you're in the South west yeah make South sure uh, if you're interested in heading along to any of those social sessions that you run then please do but like i said i'll leave all of the information in the description go and give james a follow follow the channel and we'll see you in our next video bye, bye.